As a licensed member of the media, we have a responsibility and duty to engage in discussion on topics that are representative of our local, provincial, and national audiences' concerns and interests. We are committed to excellence in our designated format, opinion and commentary. We believe in the lawful, peaceful, diligent, democratic levers of civic engagement, one important tenet of which is freedom of the press to be facilitators, not censors of debate. In a democratic society, the clash of opposing views, not all of which can be correct, is necessary and desirable. Reference material for today's topic may be requested. Some content in the following conversation may be sensitive. Viewer discretion is advised. The fact this is even poisoning the minds of the young people who now think that their, their country is guilty of genocide. It isn't. This is not a genocidal country and has never been a genocidal country. A retired chief judge, my guest today, has spent decades interacting with indigenous families, passionate about finding answers to the unmarked graves at residential schools. What his research has turned up is nothing short of astonishing. Where are these millions of dollars going? Canada's cherished indigenous people and all of us deserve to know the real facts because it's only from truth that we can have reconciliation. Today, a special episode of Return to Reason, where knowledge and wisdom intersect. Brian, it's great to have you with us today. Oh, it's good to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Brian, you did a lot of investigation into the alleged unmarked graves in Kamloops and other locations. Uh, yeah. What did your research turn up? Maybe I should start with uh, with uh, when that news all broke, and that was uh, May the 27th of, of last year when Chief Casimir of the Kamloops Band um, uh, made the startling claim that 215 children uh, or had been, or at least uh, the graves of, of uh, 215 children had been uh, detected. And um, mm. The, the claim was uh, that these were children from the uh, residential school, from the Kamloop Indian Residential School, who had been somehow killed or murdered uh, by um, the people working there, which and the nuns ran the school, the nuns and the priests ran the school, so this would ne definitely be the nuns and the priests. And then they were secretly buried by, the, uh, by moonlight, and to make it even worse, um, children were forced from their beds, some as young as six, to help with the burial. Uh, the claims got worse from that point, even worse than that. Uh, and that would probably have been the single biggest uh, crime in Canadian history, but they got even more extreme at, uh, after that point. Some chiefs, for instance, Willie Sellers at, at Williams Lake, claimed that not only had children been murdered in every different way and thrown into rivers and streams, but uh, there was a giant conspiracy between the federal government, the churches and the RCMP for decades to keep anybody from finding this out. And it wasn't only individual chiefs who were making these claims. Uh, people at the highest level, for instance, uh, the Grand Chief uh, Roseanne uh, Archibald, uh, she's the top chief in Canada, the head of AFN, and she alleged on the BBC Hard Talk show, this is a show that goes out to the entire world, that tens of thousands of Indigenous children had been murdered at residential schools and buried across Canada. And another senior, a very senior leader said 25,000 and maybe more. So this would have been one of the worst crimes in not only Canadian history, but in world history. And, yeah. uh, but when you go back and look at the evidence that, uh, that they have, we have, we have uncovered, uncovered new details about this. There was no evidence. This didn't happen. These are false stories, and I can even trace them to the uh, uh, conspiracy theories or uh, rumors or ghost stories or whatever you want to call them that had been floating around uh, Indigenous communities for, for decades. So how did you investigate this? We did uh, uh, research, and, and uh, the, uh, I'm saying we, we have a, 
a research genius in our group, Nina Green, uh, who took it upon herself to look into some of the missing children, the so-called thousands of missing children who are alleged by the uh, National Center for Truth and Reconciliation, that's the successor to the Truth and Re uh, Reconciliation Commission, to, uh, uh, it was said that these thousands of children went to residential schools and never returned. And these are presumably some of the children who are buried all over the place and being looked, at, uh, looked for right now. These children were never missed. What we found is that there are death certificates for those children. They died in very ordinary ways. Uh, most of the deaths were tuberculosis, which was the death rate at uh, uh, on reserves at that, uh, in those years was very high. And uh, naturally, the uh, residential school rates were also these children came from the reserves infected and so naturally the uh, the the rates at residential schools were also high but the thing is the important thing is these children were never missing there's death certificates it shows that wow. where they died when they died and in most of these cases the children are buried on the home reserves now the fact that those cemeteries were not tended uh, is, is, is what gives rise to this uh, uh, this claim that these are these are missing children. There's nothing sinister about it. Uh, there's also a very understandable uh, uh, need for uh, indigenous people to find burial sites. I don't quarrel with that. That's a very good uh, you know that's a natural thing. But to then claim that these children were somehow murdered and uh, the Catholic Church has been singled out for some reason I don't understand, murdered by uh, priests and, and, and nuns, this is just uh, not true. And uh, you asked about research. Wow. Another piece of, of, of research that we've come upon is that the 215 graves that were supposedly detected uh, yeah. by uh, ground penetration penetrating radar, they're not graves at all. They're soil disturbances and they are most likely part of a sewage structure, uh, which an unused uh, sewage structure built in 1924 at the Kamloops Indian Residential School and since covered up. It looks that the, it looks as though the uh, junior archeologist who did this uh, work simply forgot to do her homework and look into previous excavations and that will explain the 215 uh, possible graves. Now, they will not release, we've asked for it, they will not release the report. They, they refuse, the, the band refuses to release it. So that report should definitely, uh, should definitely be released so experts can look at it. And I think they would immediately, uh, very quickly find that it was simply a negligently prepared report. But to make matters uh, much worse, uh, the RCMP, and Canadians don't know this, the RCMP did begin an investigation immediately after okay. this claim of mass murder was, was made. But okay. then what happened, and we're trying to piece this together, but uh, uh, Murray Sinclair, who was the uh, uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commissioner, head commissioner, intervened, and he said that, uh, Sarah Bolio was uncomfortable about being questioned and other band members were uncomfortable. And so he asked that this whole investigation be called off. Now, I have no quarrel with Marie Sinclair. He's a private citizen. He can say anything he wants to. I have no quarrel with that at all. But the shocking thing is that some politicians then intervened. They must have got on the phone with the senior RCMP people and said, call off your investigation. And shockingly, they called it off and just said, well, to the to, to the uh, community, well, just do go ahead and do your own mass murder investigation and sort of a do it yourself mass murder investigation, which is which is terribly shocking. So I think that these facts wow. should come out because this is this is very wrong what has happened. The RCMP probably could have solved this case. Uh, within a week, they would have questioned Sarah Bolio. They would have realized that the um, uh, uh, that the report uh, did not detect graves at all, um, but uh, a, a sewage installation. They would have also questioned the people about 
uh, well, uh, what are these stories about six-year-olds being forced to dig graves? Well, they would probably have quickly have found out that these are the same conspiracy theories that have been floating around the reserves for years, um, uh, mainly propagated by one person named Kevin Annett, who was the defrocked United Church minister who spent most of his life time trying to, for reasons unknown to me and everybody else, promote these ideas that tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of indigenous children were murdered at residential schools. So there, so you, what you're saying here is that there is a guy named Kevin, what's his last name? Kevin Annett, A-N-N-E-T-T. -T. So he started all this. He's, he, what he did, here's what he did. This is really interesting because there had been these ghost stories probably told by kids in, in frightened little indigenous kids in dormitories at residential schools. And they told stories about priests uh, throwing babies into furnaces and, and uh, secretly burying them with the forced help of six-year-olds and all sorts of just crazy stories. Well, what Kevin Annett did uh, is he uh, uh, put together, he interviewed some of these uh, down and out unfortunate people, uh, indigenous people on uh, Vancouver's east side. These were alcoholics. And they were telling these absolutely unbelievable stories. And I'll tell you one in, in just a minute, just to show you how unbelievable they are. But what he did is he put them into sophisticated form. And he's a very articulate man. Um, and I, I, I suggest your your watchers your viewers that they can google his name and you get a movie called uh, unrepentant you get hundreds of links but you also get a movie that you can download for free and just watch it and you'll see what i what i mean and the stories are absolutely crazy but he has made it his life's work to try to make these stories believable and unfortunately there's this there's this been this almost hysteria in indigenous communities with all of these crazy stories about uh, priests killing children, etc. They've been floating around now for, for, for a few decades. Uh, your viewers were all could also read Terry Glavin's, um, uh, and Terry Glavin, of course, is a very respected investigative reporter here in Canada. He recently wrote uh, The Year of the Graves in the National Post, which sort of blew the cover off the uh, uh, this whole false claim about all of these uh, uh, these uh, murders at residential schools. But he also wrote a, a piece um, more than 10 years ago. It's in a publication called the TYEE, T-Y-E-E, -E, and it exposes Kevin Annett for what he is. It's a beautifully written article, so anybody can go to that. And let me just tell you one story just to indicate to your okay. readers how unbelievable these stories are. Uh, according to one of the stories, which is still floating around and is, and is out there and is subject to a number of uh, fact-checking um, exercises, Queen Elizabeth walked up to the Kamloops Indian Residential School and uh, invited uh, uh, the students on a picnic, and then she kidnapped 10 of the children. So, I mean, you would immediately hear that and say, well, nobody would possibly believe that. It's just so no. crazy. But they do. And it's the same thing with the other stories about priests forcing six-year-olds to help them bury bodies late at night in the apple orchard. These are crazy stories, but for reasons that are completely beyond me, uh, our mainstream media has not asked any questions at all. In fact, has has almost promoted the CBC in particular, and the politicians, uh, Trudeau, has uh, he lowered the flags for months uh, on, uh, on this completely false story. He spent more than $320 million of Canadian taxpayer money promoting the search for all of these, these uh, supposed burial sites. And of course, every uh, you can just imagine if you can get millions of dollars to just uh, search for bodies that aren't there, uh, and anybody is going to take the money. And that's what's happening. Is that one Canada. of the reasons for all this is that there's money now can be made when it comes to claims and searches and people giving or government funding? I think that the money for some people is a huge factor, but there are many other things at play here, which I don't pretend to understand. But politically, the Liberals have uh, 
for, for reasons of their own, find it uh, to their advantage to promote this story instead of doing what they should do, which would be to provide um, uh, some reasonable pushback to show that these stories are false. They don't. They, they, they want to keep these stories going. Uh, we have one of the members of our group who has been called uh, a ghoul uh, by, he wrote a very good essay, his name is Jacques Rillard. Uh, I, I invite uh, people to read that. Uh, Mark Miller, who was the, one of the Indian Affairs ministers, called um, people who would question uh, this unmarked grave story, which I'm doing now, they are ghouls. And he called them many other names as well. So the government wants to keep this going. And for reasons I do not fathom, the mainstream media doesn't want to ask any questions about this. Terry Glavin did. Conrad Black did, Barbara Kay did, there are a few other brave journalists, but most of them, for reasons, as, as I say, I don't get, are refusing to do their job and they're, they're promoting these stories instead of asking the hard questions that small groups like ours are, uh, are forced to do. So when you say that, uh, you know, that our Prime Minister uh, put $325 million into this, is he giving groups money to go research it, or how did he? What did he do with that amount of money? Well, in the Kamloops band, for instance, uh, that little band got something like eight million dollars, and um, what they're doing with it, who knows? To actually do a uh, um, the ground penetrating radar, it sounds very uh, sophisticated, but really, it's a machine that looks like something you could buy at a Canadian tire store. It looks like a little lawnmower. They drag them across the ground a couple of times and hire archaeologists like this junior archaeologist. And um, how they're spending $8 million doing this, I don't know. And when you multiply that across the country uh, to get to 320, I have no idea how that money could possibly be, be, uh, be spent. To make matters much worse, uh, the again, uh, the Miller, the cabinet minister said that this is probably going to be going on for 10 years and uh, these groups are supposed to be quite confident that they'll be getting all of the funding that they need. So I suspect that unless something happens, uh, it's going to be way past the billion dollar mark. Uh, searching for uh, yes, yes, this is this is a scandal of huge proportions. But the mainstream media is not asking any of these questions. So, is this actually going to help any indigenous or First Nations people like this? This money? Absolutely not. Uh, the as as I say, there are some communities. We have one here close to where I live, where there is a residential school. And there actually were situations where a child would die at school, uh, usually of tuberculosis, but it could be uh, influenza or any other diseases. And um, although most of the schools were located uh, close to the reserves, and so that child would, be, would, would die uh, and be buried uh, on the home reserve. In the case of Brandon, where I live, uh, these schools took in children from far north so it was even possible, and it did happen, where a child would die, the parent would be out on the trap line, for instance, uh, it would be impossible to re return the, ch the child for burial. It just couldn't be done in those days. The only way of getting to the school was by snowshoes in winter or right, by, right. by canoe in summer. So it's very they understandable. Yeah, these these people are looking uh, for the, the lost burial sites of their of their ancestors, and that's very legitimate. So what I'm hearing what I'm hearing you say, correct me here where I'm wrong, is that these reports came out, and if there's any truth, we need to find it. But the RCMP aren't investigating it, um, and then money was thrown at it, and or let's just say it's going to different places, but it is not helping our precious. Indigenous people, our First Nations. It, it's, it's not, not helping doing, them. It's it, being pocketed by people who are, who are these people? Like They're just pocketing the money. Well, who is actually benefiting? Who knows? But I doubt very much okay. whether it's doing anything to benefit um, Indigenous people. As a matter of fact, this is even poisoning the minds of the young people who now think that their, their country is guilty of genocide. It isn't. This is not a genocidal country and has never been a genocidal country. Uh, right. And it's just not true that their ancestors were murdered. But these children are being grown, are grown up 
growing up to to believe that that it's happened and our other kids in in our schools are being taught that uh, indigenous children were murdered at uh, or or died by foul means at residential schools they're being given misinformation so we have to we have to correct this it's doing nobody now, any good. i've i've seen different religious groups in canada apologize publicly um, and they're trying to do, you know, they want reconciliation. Talk to me about that. Uh, is there reconciliation taking place? Is this working? Should they have even done this if it's not true at this big of an area? Or, I don't know, talk to me about that. These church leaders, uh, these, uh, uh, I believe, are making matters much worse. Uh, the original Apology, for instance, from Pope John Paul II, who I, re who I respect very much, uh, in, in my mind was a very legitimate apology because it said he apologized on behalf of the church for the, um, uh, the bad actors, the bad apples in the bunch, the priests who did abuse children. Uh, there's no excuse for those people and the victims were Every, were entitled to every bit of compensation they received. But at the same time, he said what is true, that they, we, had, we had orders of nuns and oblates um, who gave their lives, who dedicated their lives to looking after these Indigenous children, many of whom were, were from um, terribly destitute uh, families. The poverty was enormous. So I'm going to ask you this, Brian. Like if, if you look at this, the studies, the deep, properly done studies and investigations into all of this um, say the opposite. They're not saying they were perfect. No institution is perfect. But yeah. there have been no deep dive studies with people who know what they're doing to take months or years and investigate this and turn up with all these crazy accusations the opposite is true if people want to go and read these uh, these papers on this. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll put in a plug for the book that I'm uh, uh, involved in. It's called From Truth Comes Reconciliation. It's published by the Frontier Center for Public Policy and edited by Rob, Rod Clifton and Mark Wolf. I have a chapter in there. And this is a good source for people to go to because it 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 gives you the... the, the uh, in a, in a very balanced way, um, what residential schools were about. And it does not deny that many children were badly abused. Uh, sexual abuse was very rampant, particularly the student on student abuse. But it does give an honest picture of life at a, a residential school. Much of what you're seeing today, much of what is written is propaganda by people who want Canada to be seen as a genocidal country. Why these people, especially the people who have been so successful, um, uh, where, where Canada has given them so much, would want to be trying to portray falsely Canada as a genocidal nation, I don't know. But it's one of the motivations of, uh, of the group I'm working with, to try to set the, uh, the, the record straight and show, no, these are, these are false stories by people with an agenda. When the media doesn't carry proper stuff, uh, like we had all these churches burned because they were coming against uh, the religious groups that had these schools, correct? How many were there burned in retaliation? I think it was something like something like 30. And they came after these extreme claims I was talking about. So you had uh, Roseanne Archibald, Chief uh, Archibald, telling the world that 10,000 indigenous children had been murdered by priests and nuns and, and buried all over Canada. Well, it's not that hard to understand why some people would think, well, that's horrible. Look what they've done to our uh, our ancestors and we're going to get some revenge. And for yeah. the yeah. minister to, to say that the burnings of those churches was understandable. Now that's inexcusable. That's inexcusable. Yes. You made a comment about the book was called Truth and or Truth or Reconciliation. From truth comes reconciliation. Right. I like that thought because if we don't have truth, there really isn't reconciliation. It's built on lies or at least non-truths. 
And so for anybody who's watching, our, our time is up, but for anybody who's watching who says, you know what, I want to dive in deeper. We're going to put all the places on the screen for them to go to the frontier, to your stuff, uh, okay. so they can go in themselves. And because the amount of data, like you and I have just skimmed the surface uh, for 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But if they want to dive in and see the due diligence that was that has taken place by people who care and looked into this, they can read it for themselves and draw their own conclusions. But thank you for being with us, Brian. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for watching Return to Reason. I'd like to read your thoughts in the comments section below and pay it forward. Share this video with someone. Hit subscribe and tap the bell icon so that you're notified every time I post a new video.